Welcome to part two of the tutorial series on the WoW plugin by Sugarbytes. The first thing I'd like to do is tell you how to set up MIDI program change capability. It's a hidden feature, so you're going to have to do a little digging to get this sorted out. The first thing we're going to have to do is change the preferences that WoW creates in your user library folder. In order to do this, we're going to actually need a preference editor piece of software. So I recommend this program called Preference List Edit Pro. This program is available for Mac or PC. Once you've downloaded and installed PList Edit Pro, go to the Preferences folder in the User Library. Find the Preference List file com.sugar-bytes.wow. When you double-click, it opens up the Preference file in the PList Edit Pro program. Now what you have to do is find the line that says Ignore Program Change, and you'll see that it has a value of 1. Change that value to 0, and you've done the first step of this process. Now what you have to do is create a folder called MIDI Programs. That folder should be placed beside the other folders in your Presets library. Documents, Sugarbytes, WoW, Presets folder. Once you've created that folder, you're all set to go in WoW. Store your presets in that folder and call them up with program changes. There's only one drawback to saving presets in WoW. When you add a patch into a folder, it moves it into its position in the alphabetical order. So if you've already assigned some patches in your piece, they're actually going to be bumped out of order if you put a program in that comes in ahead of it alphabetically. I find saving programs in the user folder is not a bad idea, and then making copies of them into the MIDI programs folder as you use them in your piece. To add program changes to your WoW track, simply open up the event list, select Create, and click on Program Change. Hit Enter, creating a program change, and then select the actual program number on the value list. Here are some more examples of WoW patches. In this example, I'm going to change the LFO waveform from the step sequencer values. In this patch, I'm using the step sequencer to control the rate of the LFO. Here's a similar patch, but in this one I've got the step sequencer order set to random. Here's a band reject filter being used with the compression effect that I talked about. Here's another envelope follower example. You might have noticed that the high volume points were triggering the start of the cycle. That threshold triggering effect happens when you're in free, comma, audio trigger mode for sync. Oddly enough, even though it says free, it is actually still syncing to clock. And an interesting little trick here is that there's no actual phase control for the start of the cycle. So I've found that in song position mode, the cycle starts here. And in free, comma, audio trigger mode, the cycle starts here. So that's a basic rundown of the WoW plugin. WoW is very CPU friendly, so if you want to use a few of them, you can automate the wet dry mix and pull in different effects from different WoWs on your track. Thanks for watching this tutorial series.